Okay, here we are, buried deep down at Hard Rock Cafe here in the fort. Surrounded by some great rock and roll memorabilia. This is the rock and roll rabbit hole. <laughs> yes. And um, part of that history, because we've got Alice Cooper for stuff down here, <laughs> I'm with Alice Cooper's guitarist, Ryan Roxy. Who's got I a... am not a wax figure. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> the real Ryan Roxy. <laughs> and you've got a solo album coming out, which is your, officially your first solo album. Very excited about this. Uh, yeah, of all the years that I've been putting out music and working with other artists and putting out other music under band names, this is the first official Ryan Roxy album. So why now? Why now? Um, I would say because I finally had a, the producers that I worked with said, Ryan, people know you from you know, Alice Cooper playing with Slash. Yep. What do they know you as? A guitar player, yeah. so make a guitar album. <laughs> so I went, huh, really? So good idea, and uh, I actually was inspired to write a guitar-driven album. Ten songs, ten guitar solos. So there's a lot of focus on guitar. Mm -hmm. You say that, we, it's not an instrumental album as such. You say ten songs, ten guitar solos, but they're no. great songs. Well, thank you very much. I, I think the production team that I worked with, worked with three different producers, uh, you know, different songs, for different styles that, that I'm into. Uh, they got the best out of my vocals. We, we, we arranged the songs, but they really, like I said, focused on that tone, uh, getting the most out of the guitar uh, that they could out of me. And I felt they really pushed me to a point where I'm really satisfied with this record and I can't wait for people to Excellent. hear it. And it comes out on uh, May the 25th, Cargo Records here in Europe. Absolutely. I believe it's Belly Ache in America. Yes, it is. And um, the album title, Imagine Your Reality. Yes. So tell us more about the actual title. What do you mean by that? Well, it goes back to something that since being a little kid, I would always do. I would always, as a little kid, stare at the posters on my wall. Probably we had the same yeah. posters of the same <laughs> rock stars on our wall. And uh, I said, I want to be like that someday. I imagined myself being up on stage in front yeah. of a lot of people. Now, it didn't just stop at daydreaming. And I don't think you can stop at just you know, imagining something and saying, well, it's going to happen. Mm. Let the world sort it out. No, the world will help you. But you have to meet it halfway, and you have to put sort of your plans into action. And that's kind of what I did at a very young age. I started doing something every single day to get me closer to that goal. And even though I had no idea how I was going to get there, because who would have said, you know, the guy that's going to go open all the doors for you is, is a 1970s rock star named Alice <laughs> Cooper, who's going to maintain his career all the way until yeah. 2018, and you can ride the coattails. I, I had no idea how the path was going to take me, but I trusted in the fact that the end result would be me playing in front of a lot of people, and here we are talking about Fabulous. it. Fabulous. And um, I believe you actually started playing the drums before the guitar. I, and even before that, trumpet. Oh, right. That's yeah, the, I think, was I your father the trumpet player? Yeah, yeah. My, my dad played trumpet. Wow. You, you went deep into the, <laughs> the Wikipedia rabbit hole. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> no, um, yeah, trumpet was first, and then my, my mom was actually played uh, in the marching band. Yeah. So then I started playing the drums, and then I figured really early on, uh, you know, coming first, uh, leaving last at a gig, having to have a van, mm -hmm. and having actually setting up in the back. <laughs> That wasn't the uh, optimal <laughs> position for me to meet any girls. So yeah. <laughs> what, what's going to make me meet the most girls and uh, least amount of work? And their guitar was there. Excellent. And you've had a great career out of it. And um, let's talk more about the album. Okay. You've already done a, um, a lyric video for Over and Done. Yes, I have. It's got a, lot, a bit of a rockabilly vibe to it, if you don't mind me saying. A rockabilly vibe? Wow. You know what? You know this band out of the UK, the 2220s? Yep. There was a bit of inspiration from that, and it ha and it might be a rockabilly, but but I call it rock and roll. Yeah, because if, 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 if you look at the at the sort of spectrum of the album, uh, there's a bunch of different styles. Oh. You, you have some punk rock, Sorry. right? You have some some overtones of riff rock. You even have like some indie rock. Mm. Um, but I I always say it's under the umbrella of rock and roll, and it sort of reads like the playlist that I have at home and the certain bands that I like to listen to at home anyway. Do you think that's important in making an album? It is to have like, different styles, don't keep the same song going in the same direction. Everybody has a different way of uh, philosophizing it. There used to be sort of a, uh, there used to be some sort of 
uh, thought pattern where you had to have 10 of the same songs on the same, so you would fit into that certain box that somebody wanted you to fit in, that a record label or, a, or some sort of uh, group of people wanted to put you in. I think now with the state of music, you can be in whatever box you want to. And if you want to be in a bunch of different boxes, you have the freedom to do that. And all the greatest albums that I was influenced by had those spectrum of the music. Like I, I go back to this album, Queen News of the World, put out in 1977. Yeah, we were, okay, right? we got a check yeah. Think of that spectrum of the styles of different music on that mm. album, from from opera, operatic rock to a sort of punk rock with sheer heart attack, and in, into in, uh, sort of a boogie woogie with sleeping on the mm. sidewalk, into sort of a flamenco thing. So they. They, for me, Queen, and Brian May in particular, has been such an inspiration as a guitar player and as a band to, to write that sort of spectrum. And, I, and it's so weird as I say this, and I'm looking at the vault, I'm staring at a picture of Freddie Mercury. <laughs> yeah. Is that weird? <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> They're ubiquitous. <laughs> and um, on the album, most of the songs are about three and a half minutes long, ten songs. Yeah. Back to the good old days of final, it's like yeah. 35, 40 minutes long. I think that's important when less is more. Well, don't bore us, get to the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> that, that whole <laughs> sort of feeling. Yeah, but, but the thing I'm most proud about it, even with songs that, and there are a few songs that clock in under three minutes on this album, still have a guitar mm. solo. Ten songs, yeah. ten guitar solos, I'm really happy with that. Excellent. And uh, there's one cover version on there, a song originally done by The Move, obviously popularized by uh, Cheap Trick in America. You got Robin Sander to play new album on that very song. Imagine that as a little kid. Yeah. I mean, my favorite band, my sort of Beatles growing yeah, yeah. up. Even though I was introduced to the Beatles at a very young age, I know Cheap Trick was very influenced yeah, by the very Beatles. Very much so. so and John Lennon. Yep, absolutely. And they, they were my Beatles, Cheap Trick. So growing up, you know, after school or, you know, doing my homework to Cheap Trick at Budokan. And imagine that years yeah. later, you're. You know, your top singer growing up, <laughs> guesting on your album. That was definitely rock and roll uh, bucket list item yeah. checked off. Uh, had you met him before? Um, we've toured with Cheap Trick over the years with Alice. Uh, Rick and Robin have come up on stage with us uh, a few times. Yeah. And so it was it was pretty uh, casual and, 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 and always in, in, in we had a good relationship, but the reason that really got me to ask him and the thing that pushed it over the edge yeah. was we were in Nashville with the original band and I was playing the part of uh, Glenn Buxton and the original band members were playing with Alice. Well, Robin is at that event and he comes up and he, he talks to the original band at how much uh, the original Alice Cooper band meant for him and inspired him. And it was at that moment when I said, well, Robin Zanders inspired me. Yeah. Why don't you ask him to play on your record? So I already, I already knew I was going to do this song "California Man" because I've been singing it in pubs uh, and yeah. in, in clubs for for many years. And I just think it's one of those songs. It's just this nitty gritty. It's straight ahead, and the end result is a really cool version. And you are a California man yourself. And I am a California Sorry, man. Yeah. yeah. So it, kind of, it sort of gives me. Uh, I have a, a bit of California vibe in this whole album. I have a song called To Live and Die in yeah, L.A. Yeah, I was so, that, And so I am West Coast. Even yeah. though now I've lived in Europe for a good, a fair amount of time, I never close uh, the door and I never close my heart onto uh, the good old U.S. Area. Good. And uh, let's talk about the big song, um, To Live and Die in L.A. It's actually called La La Land. <laughs> like LA, L.A. Land, is it? Or was it La La? Is it, you know, La La? <laughs> I thought the original title, I lifted from a uh, 19, either late 80s or 90s, it was a movie. It was like one of those detective LA's uh, detective movies. And I thought, well, man, this, this movie title is too cool to be just uh, just a, as a movie title. Let me make it a song. And right around that time, I, w I was playing with... Um, I was playing with the version of Alice Cooper in the Brutal Planet days, as well as uh, Sasha Snake Pit. And so you can hear in the, in the riff, in the rock, it, 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 there's a lot of influence from that time. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's some of my favorite guitar playing on the whole album, and I think the producers got the most, especially out of the solo and the, the, the parts that uh, all the overdub guitars, I really think they, they got the most out of me on that one. Okay, great. And um, I have a song on there. Oh, ah, song. Oh, is it? The uh -oh. Oh, ah, song, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh, got it wrong. <laughs> Is that like that late night activities or you know, is it about exciting? Well, it's, it's very <laughs> tribal. It's that size, whatever sound you want to make. Um, this goes back to the whole theme of imagining your reality. Uh, 
it's about playing for me when I hear that song. I got to the, uh, the, the privilege of playing in front of a lot of, a lot of large audiences over the last few years. Whether we've played a big uh, festival with Alice, the Wacken Festival in Germany for instance, or just this past year we got to play Rock in Rio. Both big crowds. Yeah, massive, and, yeah. and, the, and the thing that you found, or that I found with big crowds, is that the obvious sounds, hey, ho, <laughs> let's go, sounds really cool yeah. when there's like 100,000 yeah. people in the audience. So I envisioned what's this sound, uh-oh, being sung back to me by a large amount of people. So that hasn't become a reality yet because I haven't played the song live, <laughs> but I'm working on it, and when it does happen, we'll get back and have another chat. Excellent. And um, last song on the album, God Put a Smile on Your Face. Tell us more about that song. Well, that is the second cover on the album, and it's from a band that you might not suspect uh, me doing a cover of. But it was one of those bands uh, that won me over when I first saw them play live. Um, and after seeing them play live, that song in particular helped me uh, get through a period of my life, and I just felt the song kicked ass and would kick ass just a little bit more mm. with some more guitars. So that's exactly what we did. We and did it originally for the... Oh, okay. Yeah. You don't want to keep it a mystery? <laughs> well, okay. right. It's Coldplay. And it, yeah. it, it is one of those indie bands that you kind of go, hmm, mm. uh, do they really rock or not? Well, listen to the track and judge for yourself. I think we did a good job of giving it a little kick in the butt, but the song, go see them live. They'll win you over. They've got more pyro than kiss, yep, and they got and, and they got songs that leave you. They're still stuck in your head yeah. the next day. So, like I said, my uh, my influences are have a spectrum to them, but they, I think they're all rock. Do you think it's important? Like I say some rock fans are very stuck and they're very loyal to rock. They don't like listening to anything outside of the box. I think you have to branch out and be inspired by many many different mm. things. I think. All the great, you know, if I go back to the B word, the Beatles, I mean, imagine if they hadn't uh, been so influenced by Eastern music. Mm. Then we wouldn't have had that, perhaps that whole yeah. psychedelic era you think about it, of the they'd Beatles. They'd certainly listen to folk, Black Sabbath listened to blues, so if they didn't listen to the box, we would have had them. Yeah. So. so always try to expand your boundaries. But hey, man, at the end of the day, if you're one of those guys who just likes to pick up a, a guitar and plug it into a big loud amp and crank an A chord, <laughs> that's good too, because we got plenty of that on the album. <laughs> yeah, of course. And um, it's great production. It's, uh, some of it's done by uh, Tommy Hendrickson. Tommy Hendrickson, yeah. Yeah, he's also with you and the Alice Cooper band. Yeah. Tommy and I played together. Um, he, Tommy produced three tracks off yeah. this album, and uh, little known fact, people ask, oh, what studio did you do it in? Well. Majority of the record was recorded in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. There were some different studios throughout the world, but those songs in particular, hotel rooms throughout oh, America and Canada. Yeah. You had a little yeah. song in your hands. <laughs> yeah, well, we had days off in between uh, the Alice tour, so yeah. Tommy brought his recording rig, and a lot of those basic tracks and guitar tracks and vocal tracks were recorded in uh, Sheratons and Hiltons around the world. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, um Obviously, you've worked with Alice Cooper for almost 20 years now, on and off. Absolutely. What has he taught you? Um, he's taught me more about the music business than just music. Mm -hmm. He taught me, he's inspired me to sort of create things beyond uh, just music and putting out music because I see everything that he does. It's always anchored in the music, in the live show. But he branches out, and for instance, like uh, just a couple weeks ago, I saw him in uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, yeah. and he did a great version of a, of a musical, and, and, and it was on national TV, and he did great on it. So it always inspires me that his, whether it's his golfing uh, sort of empire, or whether it's his radio broadcasting, or whether it's his other business models that he has, it's always anchored in rock and roll, and I've always felt the same way is you know I want to ride this out ride this mm -hmm. rock and roll dream out as long as possible but at some day you know I'd also like to see different income streams from different areas yeah. and that means like you know things that aren't involved with music I'll do that 
Because like, you, you're a bit of a, a budding DJ yourself, aren't you? I believe you, you sort of, um, <laughs> you, you, you sit where I'm sitting sometimes, you do the interviews yourself. Uh, DJ 77, or I, I, I've been a host of, of some things. That go, that all goes back to what I'm talking about as far as branching out. It's always rooted in music. You know, if I was sitting here talking to you about music, I'd probably ask you about your favorite record collection, and then we'd eventually hit it off on, you know, a certain band. Can you go off and have a riot like we just had? Yeah, it's the pot out Or we could... Uh, we could tell that is just get a team, by the way. <laughs> that was the guillotine that just stopped, isn't it? Sorry, Alice. Um, but we'd, we'd eventually uh, hit it off on a band, and we'd go off and, and have some sort of discussion about that band. Because I always say, you know, they always say you're seven degrees or seven degrees from Kevin Bacon, something yeah. like that. I'm always, whatever song I hear, I'm one or two degrees from having a personal story about that song. Who would you most like to interview yourself? Wow. Um, now, would it have to be a rock and roller? Anybody, could it just doesn't be? Matter. Yeah, anybody you fancy. Yeah. I've always, always fancied uh, interviewing Obama. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, because he, I, I've seen him on, on other things. I've seen him on other interviews. He seems so personal, and I know he'd have... And he's never really done a rock and roll interview. You know, he's done <laughs> hip hop interviews. He's been done late night TV. But I think Obama would be, have a lot of interesting things to say about the I'm state sure. of the world right now, especially after stepping back for a year. Hey, step back. Don't I, you? I, I don't know. Really we go down the politics route, but um, yeah. I'm not blabbermouth like these things. I know it's your time to give you a third little Donald Trump. Oh <laughs> boy, you, you want to? <laughs> you be right onto that. <laughs> well, you want to basically get that sound bite. <laughs> and it won't be air sound bite, but we leave that to something no, else. No, 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 no. <laughs> but that's the thing. I have found touring throughout the U.S., especially this uh, last couple of years, as much as we have. Um, it used to be you didn't talk about uh, politics mm -hmm. and religion at parties. Now you yeah. just, just add gun control with that <laughs> third thing. So that's the third thing you don't talk about at parties. And here's the ultimate sort of, it's not even a sound bite, it's just my opinion. Because Alice Cooper has... Well, we, we, part we, of this show when elected is like um, the effigies of Trump and everything. We it's have... Humorous, right? We have ultra right, we have ultra left, and yeah. everybody in between. I think Alice Cooper is the rainbow nation yeah, yeah. Of, of political views. So it's... It, so for me, I let people look at facts, not alternative yeah. facts, and judge for themselves. And I actually think that a lot of people don't give credit to uh, people for making up their own minds. Mm -hmm. I always see it as I'm going to let, I'm giving people credit to make up their own minds about a situation. I only ask them to see both sides yeah. and I and make their own decision for themselves. And don't so, believe what you see on TV, don't believe what you read the papers, you know, like make your own mind. Make up. your own decision, but have have the integrity with yourself to see the other person's mm -hmm. side of the argument. If you don't, then I think you're at a disadvantage. The minute the minute that you just don't like something because they say it's red and you think it's blue, then I think without giving the opportunity of, of looking at the other side of the story then and seeing their point of view, then I think you're doing yourself a, a disservice. So I mean, I actually had my album before this uh, imaginary reality. I don't know why I'm coming up with all these <laughs> pontific uh, album titles, but the, one of my former albums was called Two Sides to Every Story. Yep. And I think uh, whether you're talking Trump or you're talking Obama, there's always two sides to every exactly. story. Exactly. Wise words, people. There is your sound. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, let's go back to some of the titles on the album. It, um, well, not so much the titles, but never mind me. We just mentioned that. Uh, that's got a lot of punk flavor. It does. So obviously a punk fan. So what's your favorite all-time punk album? Uh, well, I mean, the one that started it all, and the one people ask me, well, what's so important about 1977? Well, there was a, a little band that came out of London, and uh, never mind, wait, never, never mind, mind me, bullets. or <laughs> never mind the Bullocks? Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and we've got some all the clues Mandel's are right guitar, there, so right? <laughs> and they got a lot of Beatles -y song on the album. Uh, is it Look Me In The Eye? Yes, uh, Beatly, so, oasis -y, yeah. Cheap Trickish, um, and you mentioned uh, earlier uh, John Lennon. Yeah, uh, double it, fantasy. It's yeah. a little, it's a little yeah. early John Lennon mm -hmm. or early solo John Lennon. Were you a Beatles fan? Big time. My, I, my son's name yeah. Len, isn't Lennon. Oh well. <laughs> so, <Sorry. yeah. laughs> so what's your 
favorite Beatles album? Because you know, there are wow. three different eras there. Yeah, the there. favorite Beatles album. That's a tough one because I, I vacillate between. It's the later albums, but it's it's either the White Album or Abbey Road. I go yeah. back and forth between uh -huh, those yeah. two. Is fine yeah. because there was a lot of. Uh, as it seem seemingly experimental music in those al in those albums, but at the same time so well produced mm -hmm. and sonically still holding up today. Yeah. I mean, to me, Helter Skelter still sounds as heavy, yeah, yeah. heavier than any version that's one, one of the first heavy metal songs in yeah. some ways. <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. When that when that riff first comes on, I don't care how heavy Motley Crue <laughs> could try to make it, yeah. the Beatles still went out. Yeah, on yeah, that yeah. One. I must give them that. Oh, she'd be doing some covers of Alice uh, at his cover tour. He sort of does a little section on the like she passed uh, to pass artists who passed away. He does like a little bit of the Who. Yeah, we, we actually did. We did a uh, thing, uh, part of the set in in last year's tour called Raise the Dead. Mm. And that's where Alice sort of paid homage to uh, either someone that had, had recently passed away, because we're losing so many of the yeah. great ones these days. Um, but it was always really cool. It, Alice held each song you know, kind of close to his heart, especially the with the Who, because Keith Moon used to be sort of his buddy that lived out in 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 the uh, the pool house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess, I guess apparently, according to one of the funny stories about Alice, uh, has told me over the years, he's told me a ton of cool rock and roll mm. stories and sort of the ones where you know <laughs> rock and roll is being pioneered, not just you know these stories were were from the source, right? So he said that. Uh, um, Keith Moon was sort of like sometimes the guest that wouldn't leave. <laughs> he would come over for a weekend, then the weekend would you'd just take the end off it and turn yeah. into a week, and it would be weeks, and then. <coughs> but he he said he enjoyed him all the time, and and you never knew what the mm -hmm. hell was gonna he was gonna come up with from moment to moment, from night to night. You never knew what outfit he would dress in next. Actually, I've been fortunate myself to be in the company of Alice a couple of times, and um, he's a great storyteller. What's the great story he's told you? <laughs> well, uh, the best, the best factual story that he's <laughs> told me. No, Alice has a great saying. He says, "Never let the truth get in the way of a good story." <laughs> and and at the same time, when when he tells me that, I realize there's there's such a certain amount of truth to every one yeah. of his stories. You know, he tells me about the the Elvis story when he met Elvis, and uh, and he was with Liza Minnelli and, and Tiny Tim. You know, think about a, a trio like that. I can just imagine Alice Cooper, Liza Minnelli, Tiny Tim riding up in an elevator yeah. to meet Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> Insert punchline yeah. here, you know, so that story is always an interesting one and I've heard him tell that a few times um, My favorite that I haven't heard him tell too many is uh, When he's riding down Sunset Boulevard with Steven Tyler in a convertible and uh, Steven Tyler takes a, uh, a Handgun this is obviously not in the 80s <laughs> 90s or 2000s This is back in the good yeah. old 70s and he takes a handgun and just poof, shoots it off so <laughs> I guess Hollywood was the Wild West at one point. <laughs> Fantastic. And just before that, we sent you up. Obviously, you just finished touring of Alice, and um, he's off doing his Hollywood Vampires. Yes, I don't he believe is. you're a part of that, are you? I, I am so. not part of the Hollywood Vampires, although at, in, in my heart, if, 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 if a stake wasn't through my heart, yeah. I, would, I would be the... Uh, I, I'm an honorary vampire. I think there's a lot of people... Tommy Hendrickson yeah, 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 is, is yeah. part of it, uh, Joe Perry, yeah. uh, Johnny Depp. So, and, and we've all... Whenever there's an Alice Cooper show, we always end up uh, bringing up yeah. Johnny or or John uh, or Joe comes up. Well, was she with the band when uh, Alice played the Hundred Club a few years ago when Johnny Depp appeared? Nope, that was before my time. That was oh, right. right. One of the times you was even there. That yeah. was right before I got the call to come back. Also, well, you have appeared with Johnny Depp on stage. Yes, yes, we've done a, a few shows together, yeah. and uh, he's always. Everyone always asks me, well, you know, what's Johnny Depp like as a guitar player? I say. He's one of the most rehearsed, well-prepared yeah. guest guitar players that we've ever had come up because he really does do his homework. And it, it makes sense because he's an actor. An actor, yeah. an actor learns his lines, and then he was, he was a guitar player yeah. way before, so it's already in yeah. his DNA. But he studies for it, and he studied the parts, and even he came up and did uh, Poison with us, which is not an easy song no, just, no, to, no, just to okay. do off the I cuff. Riff, yeah. He nailed the uh, pre-chorus, nailed the chorus, and so, yeah, he's got our vote. Brilliant. Yeah. And um, I was like, so you've got free time, you've got a solo album coming out, Imaginary Reality. Thank you. So is that going to be some live dates? 
Yes, good. And um, I'm trying to make as little free time as possible. You know, everyone knows that uh, this lineup, we always prioritize the Alice Cooper tour. We want to, we want, we want to be the band that rides us into the sunset. And so, uh, any time off that we have, though, I'll be doing my best to do shows down here in the UK. Do, I got some planned in the Midwest a, a little bit later in the year, but uh, who's going to be your touring band? Wow. No, no, nope, nope. we're still working that out. This is, like I said, this is this is new territory for me. Yeah. I've put out a lot of music with a lot of different musicians over the years, and I've never officially put a solo band. I'm sure your phone book is quite thick. I'm about to think about <laughs> Do you have phone books anymore? I can't remember the last. Oh, time no, I still use. <laughs> I can't work out the iPhone, did I? Isn't it weird that you can't remember phone numbers anymore? <laughs> yeah. You have, we replaced the mind of, of you know, I, I couldn't tell you, I don't think I could tell you my own phone number, basically. <laughs> maybe, maybe my own, but it's like we can't remember phone numbers, yeah. but we remember a million different passwords. Exactly. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm afraid I've just run back up. Um, when you're on the road, we talk about social media, do you spend a lot of time on your iPhone? Um... I do spend a fair amount of time, just like anybody. Definitely not as much as my kids, yeah. and <laughs> and I'm trying to I'm trying to wean it a little yeah. bit, I'm trying to take it down during dinner time, uh, and any time that we go out when we're on tour with the band, I actually had a no cell phone policy when we went out with the band members. Yeah. Not everybody, not yeah. everybody actually adhered to that, <laughs> but you know, again, Alice Cooper being a bit of an inspiration, he doesn't own a cell phone. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't have an email account. You know, the, I guess the be, that's the best way to stay away exactly. from a cell phone is never even have one. Yeah. <laughs> well, it might have been fantastic to talk to you. The album Imaginary Reality out on May the 25th on Cargo Records and Belly Eight Records. Yeah. And also, more importantly, it's coming out on vinyl as well. Four different colors of vinyl, so uh, choose that, your one. Well, uh, I've always uh, been a little bit themed with the red, white, and blue, and this album is coming out in red, white, blue vinyl plus traditional black and you can Boom. choose your album cover that's all part of imagining your reality it's really good packaging so things four going different on. album covers yeah four different album covers yeah. but they're interchangeable yeah. like I told you it's one of those interchangeable yeah. things where you can choose which one you want at any given time and I believe the the compact disc packaging is going to be set up in such a way too where you can uh, choose which album cover you want to be in the front when you want it Boom. So there you go yeah. there you go why well, not see imagine your reality Thanks for the chat. Thanks for the chat. Be brilliant. Thank Cheers. You. All the best. Cool. Cheers. Push that button.